Scott's Richmond practice, Sammy is bringing in his 14-week-old kitten after he was involved in a nasty accident. Hiya. Hello. Is this Kim Tosh? Yes, it is. Oh, he's had a bit of a nasty fall, hasn't he? Yes, he has. So I thought I'd bring him in straight away. Get Scott to have a look at it. Yeah. Poor thing. He actually climbed up a door. He usually just pounces down onto the sofa. So what he's done instead is he's jumped the other side where it's wooden flooring and he's managed to have a really awkward fall and he's managed to hurt his hind leg, which is really sad. Hey, Sammy, you all right, mate? Hi, Scott, how you doing? Yeah, good, good, yeah. what's happened? Oh, my cat's had a really awkward fall. How far? Um, he's fallen from about 10, 11 feet. Right. From a door. Wow, that's a, a huge fall. Yeah. Hello, yeah. sweetheart. Hello. What's his yeah. name? Hello. <laughs> his name's Kintosh. Kintosh. That's a hell of a fall for a little man, isn't it? Yeah, he's not walking very well on that leg, is he? It's just hanging. That's how little feels, sweetie. Oh, sweetie. Oh, yeah. Bite the vet, bite the vet, that's fair. Holding little Kintosh, I can see that there's something wrong with his left leg. He's not putting it down properly. And when I extend it, he's very sore. Yeah, Sammy, look, I can feel some real grinding nuts and bolts type feeling in this hip here. So unfortunately, I don't think he's got away with this fall oh. scot-free. So I think what's best is that I take him straight downstairs. Yes, please. If you give could. him a quick x-ray and we can talk more. That would be right. perfect. All right. Thank I'll you so take much, him. Scott. You grab a seat. Thank right. you. Thank you so much long. for your help. Come on, sweetheart. Let's go. I'm extremely worried about him. I just hope he's going to be all right. He's just a kitten. He's still a, he's still a baby boy. Hey, Gina. Hello. Look at this little <laughs> kitty. Well, yeah, this is Kintosh, who's decided to jump off an 11-foot door. Why have hey? you done that? What are you doing? Assisting hey. Scott today is vet nurse Gina. This left leg is a problem, so just... You don't oh. like that, do you? See how that one goes mm -hmm. down in that one? Yeah, OK. There's something going on in this hip area, so we're going to have to no. give him a little sedation and just see what's going okay. on, and hopefully it's nothing too serious. Hey, hopefully it's nothing too serious. <laughs> hey? Kittens are obviously very energetic, bouncy little creatures, which is lovely when you're playing with them, but when you need to do something mean, like give them an injection, not so nice. Oh, we're sorry, we're sorry. Oh, baby, all right, all right. So we'll have to keep him a little bit still in order for us to be able to take an X-ray to have a look at his hip and see what needs to be done. X-ray. doesn't sound like very positive noises you're making. <laughs> no, no, for very good reason. Look. Oh, that's not good. Poor baby. Hey. Are you good? Are you lovely? Are oh, you? Yeah. You a good girl? No, a good dog. In Chiswick, Lisa is bracing herself for a trip to see Scott with her German Shepherd, Poppy. Can I see Scott now? Come on, then. Let's go. Let's Poppy is just one year old, but Lisa is worried about something oh, strange with the young dog's back legs. Off to the vet, Pops. When we take her out, she bunny hops because it's like her legs don't go together. Come on, he's a good dog. Her legs go stiff, Come on, then. especially when she's resting like, after she's been running. Yeah, she struggles with her legs. Yeah, I know. You knew you'd be over there, didn't you, with him? Lisa will be devastated if Poppy's problem is serious. The loving dog has brought some much needed cheer back into her life. I cared for my mum for four years. In that time, my other dog passed away, so we was out of dog for a year. Then my mum passed away. I had so much time on my hands. I missed having a dog in the house. Yeah, she's. Made us busy, <laughs> kept us happy. Yeah, she's lovely. I know, I know, you're good. Lisa is hoping Scott will be able to help the young dog and give her the quality of life she deserves. To watch her run in like she was when she was a puppy, be great, really, really great. Come then, Pops, we're going to see Scott. So, Sammy, here's your boy. Right. Oh, Kintosh. Hello, boy. 
At his Richmond clinic, Scott has just x-rayed tiny kitten Kintosh after his nasty fall. They made you better, yeah? They're gonna make you better, yeah? And now he has to tell worried owner Sammy the results. On this left-hand side, there is a fracture. There's a I break. I can see that. You've got a ball, mm -hmm. you've got a neck, and then you've got the femur, so yep. the thigh bone. The thigh and bone. they sit into the socket, and that's the ball and socket joint, which is the hip. So the ball mm -hmm. has come off from oh. the neck. So when he's fallen, literally that's just snapped off. Oh, poor Kintosh. If he did nothing with Kintosh, eventually this leg will be completely non-functional because the head and the neck would still be grinding and rubbing against each other, causing pain. Kintosh would continuously lift the leg up, the leg would start becoming wasted, the muscles would tighten up, and eventually it would just be a withered leg hanging on the side of this poor cat's body. So what we need to do, unfortunately, is do what's called a salvage procedure, so a procedure which will allow him to continue to function, but he's not going to be perfect. What we'll do is actually go in and remove the ball, the femoral head, and a little bit of the neck as well. So he'll have a free-floating hip joint. Okay. Now in a cat, all the muscles will take on the strength of the joint. And in time, he might have a slightly shorter leg, but you should never see it as an issue. There won't be no limping or no lameness. Or... There shouldn't be, no. He should be able to jump and run and do all the normal things a normal that a kitten cat. should. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. But unfortunately, he does need to go through major surgery. Unfortunately, yeah. Be my baby boy would be better. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank you for all your help, Scott. No worries. You want to say goodbye to your little chap? Bye, Kintos. Bye. I didn't actually think it was that bad. To be honest, I thought it was a bruise or maybe a torn ligament. A fracture was completely out of the picture. It's really alarming. I just hope Scott can do a really good job and, you know, fix my baby boy up. Bye, Kintos. See you soon. All right, Sammy. All right, then. See you Thanks, soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. I'm extremely worried about him. It's, it's going to be a devastating blow to me and my family if, 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 if something was to ever happen to Kintosh. OK, let's knock this boy out then, shall we? Then, sweetheart. It's proper sleepy times now. Scott is about to start surgery on little kitten Kintosh. The 14-week-old kitten snapped his femoral head, or the top of his thigh bone, after falling from a high door. Poor little Kintosh's hip joint is no longer effective, and I can't even fix it and place a pin or some screws or even a plate. It's far too short, so what I need to do is to actually perform a femoral head and neck ostectomy. That's basically going into the joint, removing the head, the ball of the ball and socket joint, remove any bony attachments to the hip, all together so that he'll now have a free floating joint. Okay, happy? Happy. Right, here we go. And he can use that leg and have to be comfortable. Oh, my little man. Kintosh will sleep okay. off the anaesthetic before heading yeah, home to more sweetheart. Right. Good boy. Yeah, fair enough. It's all right, you can just rest. Lisa has now arrived at Scott's practice mm. with her German oh, Shepherd lovely. Cross, Poppy. Oh, you loved it, you? I was anxious coming here, a bit worried about what was going to happen to her. I can't wait to get her sorted. Hello, Poppy. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hi, I'm hi. Hello, gorgeous girl. How are you doing? With her legs a bit stiff. Mm. I've noticed they're getting worse, yeah. Oh, sweetheart. Hello. Well, can I have a little look and see you walking, eh? Hey? Can you show me what's happening? Hey, good girl. Hey. All right, well, Lisa, if you want to just take her for a walk up okay. to the top of the clinic and back, and just have a look Come at her boss. walking. Okay. That's a good dog. Come on. Come on. Mm. Watching Poppy walk now in the clinic, I can see she's walking up on the left leg, definitely shows signs of discomfort. She's not fully extending the leg when she's walking. She seems to almost be lifting a leg up a little bit. So there's clearly a problem with this dog and my guess is it's her hips. Good girl, that's it, all right. Well, definitely a few issues, haven't you? Definitely a few issues. That is not a normal year old dog walk, is it? No. No, she's walking a little bit like a grandma. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, let's go into the console room and chat about your legs, shall we? Come on then. In we go. Good girl, Poppy. What we'll do, Lisa, is I'm just going to get it to you to walk her out from the wall, and then if you grab hold of her shoulders, and then what we're going to try and do is just have a feel of those legs. All right. Okay. You can stick a muzzle on them. Um, do you think that we should straight I away? Th I think you should. I just, yeah, I don't know if she would, but just in case. I would probably bite someone if they pulled at my saw leg as well. So allowing me to put a muzzle on Poppy just means that Lisa's allowed me to protect myself while I'm trying to look after Poppy. Oh, oh I know. Oh, I pop. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, straight away. Hey, and I haven't even done anything. Gosh, it's, it just shows how painful she is. Yeah. You know, you can't be a Jekyll and Hyde like that without a very good reason. I'd love to do more examination with Poppy, but as soon as I even try to extend one of the legs, she gets very upset and stressed. I think what we're gonna have to do today, Lisa, is to give her a general anaesthetic, take all that pain away, then I can have a good examination yeah. and an x-ray. What yeah, do you think? Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds, yeah, better. All right then, Lisa. I'll give you a call when she's working up. Okay then, brilliant. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, sprightly three-year-old Toby doesn't look like he needs a visit to the vet, but Toby's developed a disturbing habit. Toby. Well, Toby is our little puppy. He's not a puppy. He's, he'll be three in July, and he does have his problems. Yay, good man. He'll come outside, he'll have a wee, and then he'll go inside and he'll start licking. And then he'll lick and lick and lick his private bits. I would have thought that once he was neutered... That would take care that of... That would take him, taking care of the problem, but this has been an ongoing thing. And I kept thinking, maybe he'll stop this, he'll outgrow this, but he's not. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? We've tried the collar. It's very restrictive for him. Yeah. I've got the little onesie type thing, and that stops him. But as soon as you take that off, he's right back at it. Somebody's going to have to sort you out. While putting on a brave cows. face, expat American yeah. Pamela and her yeah, husband Kevin are worried about why West Toby is stuck. excessively yeah. licking yeah. his penis. Once it comes out and it gets stuck, then there is signs of discomfort that he's getting because it is, it is stuck. So um, from that side of things, it's, it, it, the problem needs sorting. Are you ready to go? It's going to be a long trip. Pamela and Kevin have contacted Scott, hoping he can help. I emailed Scott. It was quite an explicit description because I thought he would need more details. Hopefully Scott can... Can sort him out. Sort him out. Just a funny noise. <laughs> I know, oh, okay. I know, I know, sweetie, oh, I know. Oh, oh see? In Richmond, Scott and Nas Jess are doing their best to settle nervous German Shepherd, Poppy, so Scott can examine the one-year-old dog's painful hips. Good girl. All right, so, sleepy time now, OK? Take away all that pain if it's just for a little while. As soon as the anaesthetic takes effect, Scott will be able to get a closer look at Poppy's hips. One, two, three, up. Good girl. To try to work out what's wrong. Let's go. So I'm just now starting to properly examine Poppy's leg. Now she is deprived of her senses under anaesthetic, and uh, I can see straight away and feel straight away that the musculature around the back legs is actually really wasted. She should have really big, stocky thighs, but she doesn't. And that's not normal, and it just shows that she probably is not putting all the weight on the back legs that she should. Oh, wow. It's all right. You can see that even under anaesthetic, this dog is flinching. 
So we're just going to turn her up a little bit more. All right, Jess, ready? One, two, three. That's it. Oh, nice. Gosh. Oh, my goodness. Jess, look at that. Like, that's it. Like, it should be able to come out to here and... Poor thing. Oh, oh God. Poppy. Jeez. Just can't imagine how uncomfortable that would be. I can probably extend it maybe halfway, but you should be able to point it right back. And this dog has really poor flexibility. And when you think that this should be a teenager, they should be incredibly flexible, this dog has got some serious issues. You certainly don't see this very often in young dogs. It's devastating, really. You know, they've just started their lives. They should be happy and healthy and full of beans. She's just full of pain. God knows what I'm going to see on x-ray. OK, baby. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, good God. Good God. OK. X-ray. This is really bad. Looking at the x-rays, I feel for Poppy and equally for Lisa because the changes there are significant. And the fact they've happened in just 12 months is it's called hip dysplasia and a very severe case of it. It's really sad to see this kind of condition in a dog as young as she is. This left hip, it is popped out of the hip joint. And that's why that left leg, I couldn't even extend it. Her leg, I could probably only extend maybe sort of 50, 60%. I couldn't get it right back because it's popped out. It is dislocated. Wow. So that's oh, that I'm side. And unfortunately, the right side's not much better. Sadly, German Shepherds are a little prone to this disease. It is genetically inherited. And she has absolutely inherited some awful hips. Poppy's hips are bad, there's no question about that. And at some stage down the line, surgery may be unavoidable. But I first want to try a non-invasive approach. Given the level of Poppy's muscle wastage on those back legs, I think if we can try to build them up with things like physio and hydrotherapy, I think there's a good chance that she'll be able to better support her hips and hopefully reduce her discomfort. Now, it may work, it may not. But in Poppy's case, if we can avoid surgery, I think it's worth a try. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. We can do that. All right, well, do you want to come in and see her wake oh, yes, up? Yes, please. Yes. Give her some love and yeah. hugs. I know that's what she needs. Yeah. Yeah, come on then, follow me. I knew that it was going to be bad, but not that bad. You know, I just want her to be better without pain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, baby. Well, uh, it's going to be a long road you guys. Yeah, this is um, just the start. It's going to be weeks and weeks and weeks. Well, I think we're up to that. Good. Yeah. Hey, Pop. It's just horrendous to think what Poppy's been through, but she's so lucky that she's got Lisa by her side and I know that Lisa will do everything she can to get Poppy happy and healthy again. Oh, where's my little Poppy? Here she is. <laughs> Here she is. <laughs> Mmm, <laughs> lovely thing. Oh, fix your pop. Hello. How are you? Come on then. After surgery to repair Kintosh's fractured hip joint, Nurse Sam wants to see how well the little kitten's leg is moving. Good boy. Get you some physio. Hmm? Scott removed the ball from the head of Kintosh's thigh bone, but with time and gentle exercise, the muscles should take over. It's really important that we start some physio with him, although at this stage we don't know how well his leg's healing. Walking well on that leg, aren't you? Let's do it again. Good boy. I know. Don't get cross. I'm very hopeful that Kintosh will make a speedy recovery and he won't have any lasting effects from the surgery. He's been so brave. I know it's sore, but we have to do it. Good boy. Meanwhile, upstairs, 
It's a great email, isn't it? I've never really read anything like that before Scott worked me. <laughs> Scott and Kirsty are reading an email about the next patient. This dog has got some issues I'm hoping to be able to fix. He sounds like he's enjoying himself. <laughs> <laughs> Almost too much. Yeah. <laughs> Maltese Terrier Toby has a problem with excessively licking his penis and his owners are hoping Scott can help. Hello. Hello. You must see Pamela and Kevin. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too, Pamela. Thanks for coming down and seeing us. Now let's see the man of the hour. The man of the hour is Toby. Toby. Hello, handsome boy. How are you? Hi. All right then, come on, Toby. Let's get you in that consult room. Hey, stop making Kirsty blush. Come on. <laughs> Pamela and Kevin have written me possibly one of the funniest emails I think I've ever read and I needed to meet them off the back of that and I need to meet this dog Toby. He's been a very naughty boy. <laughs> so let's see the problem. Whoa, hello. <laughs> yeah. Does it stay out it's... that far a lot? Yes, most of the time. Really? Most yeah. of the time it most looks like that. How does it come to be out? He will go outside sometimes, have a wee, come in. Dogs normally lick themselves after they've had a wee. Yeah. But he just continues. Right. And then he'll lick and lick, and if I call him, he'll look up at me like, yeah. The problem is something called paraphimosis, or in layman's terms, having a lipstick out, is something that we do see in the vet practice quite regularly. But generally, with castration, the testosterone level wanes and these animals are absolutely fine. But in Toby's case, not only has castration not worked, but it's actually got worse. So I wonder if it's that he is a little bit sensitive in that area, mm -hmm. and then by licking the area to appease whatever it is that's irritating him, he stumbled across the fact that's a pretty enjoyable pastime, <laughs> and then he's just taken it to a whole other level. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I think we need to look at this as a two-pronged treatment. Right. The penis is almost a little bit too big for the right. prepuce, the skin. Yeah. So it's almost like the banana's too big for the banana skin. Yep. Right. And it, when it pops out, it actually almost tourniquets around the end of his willy. Mm -hmm. yep. And all the laughter aside, that can actually be dangerous because yeah. it can block off the blood supply. Mm -hmm. uh, it can damage the urethra, which is the tube from the bladder to the outside. So then it can have you know, urinary issues, you can uh, have blocked bladder as a result. So there's, right. there's a lot of potentially very concerning symptoms. So I need to try and improve its size and shape. And the way that I'll be increasing the aperture where his penis comes out is by just stretching it and opening it up a little bit. Right. I'll also be placing a tack, I think, further up to try and hold, almost if you think of, you know, a, a sausage in a bun, if you held the bun up, then right. it, the, the sausage will stay in it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm hoping will happen here with right. Toby. As far as I'm concerned, Toby's in the perfect hands. I'm confident Scott's got a grip of the situation. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's a good one. He's got, he's, he's got a grip of it, yeah. That's... Toby will enjoy that. I'm going to sort you out first. No, no, no. No, no. I don't normally mind a puppy kiss, but for him, a handshake yeah. I guess, yeah. is better. There you go. Is it yeah. <laughs> West of London at Scott's Referral Centre. Teresa has arrived with her seven-year-old cat, Lenny. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Lenny. Lenny is booked in to see specialist orthopaedic surgeon, Michael Hamilton. Hello, good morning. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Michael, and this is, uh, this is Lenny. Lenny. Follow me. Okay, so what's, uh, what seems to be the problem with Lenny today? What's she's got that? something wrong with her ear. Okay. Uh, when I got home, she, she's losing her balance. She oh. actually fell over. Oh, really? Oh. And, uh, yeah, and she's gone a bit floppy oh. as well, so there's definitely okay. something wrong. Okay. When you saw her falling over, do you remember what side she fell to? Was she it? was falling over to her left. To the left-hand side. Yeah. All right, okay. She was shaking her head and then ah. just collapsing on the ground. Ah, okay. To see your cat falling over when they're normally so full of grace, it, it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. It was that cold dread that you know something's wrong almost with your child. She's got her head slightly tilted to the side, uh, but presumably it's been worse than that when she was falling when over, she was falling I guess. Over. Yeah, sure, okay. Mm. Well, I'm going to have a little look down her ear if she'll let me. Okay, all right. Oh, baby. 
Okay. Oh. Well, from that little glimpse that I got, there is a there's a little growth in the bottom of this ear canal. I'm gonna see if I can show it to you. Can you see that down there? It's kind of shiny, glistening pink thing right at the bottom. Okay, there we go, there we go. What is that? Okay, so that's um, almost definitely, that's a thing called a polyp. So um, a polyp is a little growth, it's not a tumour. A polyp is an inflammatory lump. You tend to see these in cats that have maybe had cat flu as, as young kittens, and their immune system is kind of overstimulated, and you get this kind of in inflammatory tissue starts to turn into a lump. Here is my cartoon diagram of an ear. Okay, so here's the little bit of ear that you can see. Here is what we call the vertical ear canal, okay? Lenny's polyp is growing from inside the middle ear in the bony chamber called the bulla. And this is where we perceive balance. And if you have a little growth which sits in here and presses on there, that's probably why she's been falling over. So that kind of fits. In her world, her little horizon is that way. She thinks the world is that way up. And that will probably get worse if we leave her untreated. The best way to remove the polyp is actually to go actually into the buller itself and actually kind of remove it, remove it at source, if you like. It can be quite fiddly just because of the size of the thing that we're dealing with. And we just need to be as gentle as we can do just because of the, the, the nerves in there. But you've got to do what you've got to do to get it out because if you leave some behind, it grows back. So if, if you're keen to go ahead, we'll, we'll get you booked in for as soon as we can and uh, we'll get Lenny sorted out. She's my baby and I love her. And I, I don't like to see her not right. Um, so I want, I want to get her fixed. I'll see you guys soon. Okay. Okay. See you soon. All right. Thank lovely. You. See you soon. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> this is Toby. Hi, Toby. In the Richmond Clinic, three-year-old Toby is about to undergo some unusual surgery. He's got a little bit of an embarrassing problem, haven't you, mate? Oh, no. Should we share with the girls? They're nurses, so they'll understand. Um, that's the problem. Oh, dear. That's a bit unfortunate. So during the surgery, I'll be doing the anaesthetic and just making sure that everything's OK mainly the top end, whilst he deals with the, the bottom end. I feel that I have made sure that in future, even if Toby keeps up with this, well, a little bit of a naughty, mischievous habit, that at least his penis can return to where it should go, which is back in the comfort of the prep use, and it looks so much nicer as well. I'll be glad when Toby gets out of here. Yeah. Toby's I owners, Pamela and Kevin, will be relieved when they hear the surgery is over. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so here's your little champ. There he Hello, is. Man. How are you? So he has How done very well. Uh, he has a new little designer prepuce down there. So what I'm hoping is that if it does come out, mm -hmm. it can go back, go back. Yeah. pretty oh, quickly easy. and pretty easy. Yeah. Scott also has a solution that should stop Toby from licking himself. We could also use a little bit of apple spray in the area, and it might just be that he, he licks it. Generally, they hate the flavour, uh, and I hopefully he'll... Can. Yeah, he'll leave it alone. Yeah. 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 Yes. Very pleased. Very pleased. This is my baby. My fur baby. So looking forward to getting him home. Well, I'm sure he wants to be quite a long distance away from me, so... Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so hopefully I get to come up and see you guys in Cambridge here soon and just see how he's getting on. OK. Excellent. Yeah. That'd be brilliant. Bye, champ. Okay. See you later. Okay. See you later. Bye -bye. Say bye-bye. Okay. Bye. He's like, yeah. Yeah, right. See ya. <laughs> bye. Bye, guys. Bye. See you, Christy. Can you go on? Bye. Yeah. It's a new day. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Lenny. Okay. How are you doing? And How's she doing? Today. Are you OK? I'm, I'm quite nervous. Oh, she'll be fine. We'll take really good care of her. At Scott's okay. Referral Centre, it's time for Lenny's ear surgery. I'm excited that they're going in to help her, but I'm really nervous because I just worry with any surgery, there's risk, you know, that she's under anaesthetic. I just want it to go well and I want it to come back to me and I want it to be healthy again. All right, so try not to worry. I know it's difficult, but we'll take good care of her. Yeah. You say goodbye. Bye-bye, baby. Hey. See you later. All right, Lenny. Come on, then. Let's go. See you later. Take care. Bye. Come on, then. 
I trust Michael and I know he'll do a really good job, but I love her and I need her back. So I just want it to be over and I want her to be back home with me. There we go. It's all right. Hello, darling. Specialist right. surgeon Dr. Michael Hamilton needs to remove a large polyp from Lenny's middle ear. <laughs> She's looking at me going, you so and so. It's all right, darling. Yeah. We're going to sort you out. It's fine. Don't worry. The pre-med has landed. Lenny's surgery is about to get underway. But no one is prepared for what happens next. Is that the car there? No. It was the white car. It was going in that way. Yeah. Thank you. That's the one. It's the one with the big alb in the front. At Scott's referral centre, a car has crashed into the front of the clinic, narrowly missing clients in the waiting room. Apparently, uh, some lady had kind of come to the junction, kind of opposite, and had jumped on the accelerator instead of the brake, and it went full speed straight into the building. Yeah, it could have been pretty, pretty bad, wouldn't it? But um, Kim had it all under control. She's on the phone. I think she recalled the paramedics. She's on the phone to the police as well. Everyone was kind of looking pretty calm, actually. So I just kind of left them to it and went back to what I do. Thankfully, no one was seriously injured. Lenny will spend the night sleeping off the anaesthetic before owner Teresa can take her home. I'm looking forward to calling Teresa and letting her know that everything's fine. I'm going to feel so much better when you come home from that. What are you doing? What are you doing? After surgery to repair his fractured hip, little kitten Kintosh has made a remarkable recovery and is well enough to go home. Kintosh is looking so much happier. He's purring away, he seems pretty comfortable, and he's already putting his foot down, which is a great result. Hi, Sammy, how you doing? Hello, Scott, how you doing? Kintosh, there's your daddy. Hello, Kintosh. Here he is. Oh, I'm so pleased that he's coming home today. Um, the house ain't been the same without him, and uh, I'm really excited to, to get him home, you know? He's been what? such a brave little boy. Oh, I've missed him. But now I've done the surgery, all the work is yours, my friend. Yeah. So what you're gonna need to do is quite a bit of physio. Now it's all down to Sammy. He really needs to encourage Kintosh to use his leg. And the best way to do that is with physio to ensure that Kintosh does use the leg quicker and more effectively in the future. So you just try and stretch. I know, I know, I know. So if you can manage to do it, last one, last one, last one, it will get less and less painful and become more and more easy for you to do. But uh, he is a fairly forgiving boy. <coughs> it is very upsetting that Kintosh has had to go through this whole process, that he's broken his hip and that he has needed to have this salvage procedure. But there is a silver lining in the fact that being a baby, hopefully he'll forget all the discomfort and the pain and so hopefully moving forward, he'll leave all that baggage behind him and be a healthy, happy kitten who does run around like a normal cat should. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good on you. Thank Good you to so see you. Thank Take you very care, much Sam. for your help. Bye, Take bye, mate. Care now. See bye. ya. Bye, Kintosh. Hey, Lenny. How you doing, my friend? It's also on, time then. for Lenny to go home with his relieved owner, Teresa. You know that it's going to be okay, but there's always that chance that just maybe something will go wrong, something unforeseen, and until you get that call, you just don't know. Hi, Teresa. Hello. You can relax. Everything went fine. Hello, my Here she is. Hello, honey, Here she is. So she's recovered really, really well. So please, thank um, you so uh, much. So yeah, really chuffed with how it went in theatre. We got into the buller and sure enough, there was this little shiny thing, the suspected polyp, and we kind of pulled it and it kind of gently kind of came out in a one. It was really satisfying. Fantastic. So, yeah, really good. And that's why her neurological signs are probably no worse at all. She looks think. fantastic. No, really, really chuffed with her. Hello, baby. I'm really pleased. They found what they were looking for. They've got it out and it all went really well. I'm so happy. There you go, she looks great. She looks awesome. She looks really good, yeah. So really pleased. Fantastic. Uh, over to you for some TLC. I love Michael. I adore him. He's saved my Lenny. He's remarkable and he's done an amazing job. I'm really, really happy. Are you feeling better? Are you feeling better? Yes. Yes, you are. Ready? 
And for one-year-old German Shepherd Poppy, a run in the park is no longer a painful ordeal. Good girl, Pop. Scott diagnosed Pop. severe hip dysplasia Pop. in the young dog and prescribed intense physio and hydrotherapy in the hope of avoiding surgery in the future. Good girl. It's still early days, but so far the results are promising. It has been quite a tough journey, obviously, getting Poppy to do the hydrotherapy. Um, she still goes. Every other week, we're still taking her. Sit. All right, Buster, sit. Lisa now has a second rescue dog, Buster, and he's been the perfect playmate. He's great with her, and she's great with him. They absolutely love each other. I hate being apart. <laughs> Hello, Poppy. Hi, Hi. Lisa. How, Hi, are Scott, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. You're well. Yes, I'm good, thanks. I can't believe it. I've been watching you throwing the ball for this beautiful girl, and you are doing so well. I can't believe how well she's doing. It's amazing. I don't think she's got pain anymore. I don't think she's... I mean, the way that she runs and jumps around and plays with Buster, yeah, I think she's a lot more comfortable. Don't know if I'll be able to promise that forever she'll not have surgery, but I think to be able to push it away until she's maybe a little bit older and a little bit happier with vets. Uh, so we can do as a procedure as big as that. But in the meantime, I think you've, you've performed a miracle, yeah. Lisa. You really have. This is a dog that could barely move without a huge amount of discomfort. And now she's chasing balls. She seems an incredibly happy, transformed dog. And it's all down to the incredibly dedicated Lisa. Where's that ball? I think don't rule surgery out. Ready? I mean, she might have to have it in the future, but the way she is now and the way she runs around, she seems such a happier dog. Come on, good girl. I'm happy. I'm very happy. Good girl, Pop Pop. And as for Toby, Scott is keen to see for himself if the little dog's rather embarrassing problem has been sorted. Hello, Toby. Hello. Hello, Pam. Hello, Scott. How are you? I'm really well. Good. Have you been behaving yourself? Yeah. He's been a good boy. Great. Let's have a chat. Whoa, hello. <laughs> Toby's fascination with a certain part of his anatomy was proving to be a serious medical issue, and Scott was forced to operate. Uh -huh. There you go. This new designer penis. Well done, Scott. Well, the first thing I can see is that the hole that his penis could come out of, the prepuce, is, is a lot bigger, so it's maintained the size, so yeah. it should mean that at least it slips back into that covering should... rather than get stuck out, which yeah. was the problem. And the second thing was, of course, his behavioural problem, his habit of... Of licking. Licking the area. I use the apple bitter spray. Oh, yeah, I see that here. Yeah. Oh, look, he doesn't even like the look of it now. No, he doesn't. It's almost like just getting out the bottles enough to it, put him off. It does put him off. Scott was thrilled with Toby's progression here. A team effort. It was, definitely. And Toby's now a different dog. <laughs> It's very good to see now, though, that he isn't uh, focusing so much on himself and all that me time is now translated into family time, which is yes. just That's far healthier, amazing. really, isn't it? Yeah. Hey? <laughs> far nicer for everyone. Hey, yes, share the love, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.